pass the savings on to you. They even offer buy now, pay later. So get in before the wait grows longer and get the $2,500 off. Get your new windows this spring. Make the call. Advanced Window Products, 801-850-9100. That's 801-850-9100. Or visit advancedwindowsusa.com. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Every business faces challenges, but complicated, expensive, and uncertain shipping shouldn't be one of them. With USPS Ground Advantage from the United States Postal Service, you can avoid all the noise. No more unexpected surcharges, hidden fees, or complex rate structures. It's just easy, cost-effective, and dependable shipping. Tune your business's frequency to success and turn shipping to your advantage. Learn how at usps.com slash advantage. USPS Ground Advantage. Simple, affordable, reliable. You know, Deb, you and I have had this conversation so many times. We think, oh, I wish I had a little more light here or maybe a ceiling fan there. That's why we love Master Electrical. So anytime we have an electrical problem, we know we can call them and they will give us their upfront pricing guarantee. Because we're not going to do it yourself. We're going to leave it to the professionals. And this upfront pricing guarantee is fantastic. I'm sure you've been bitten by bids in the past where they say, oh, that's going to take half a day. And then two weeks later... The bid and the invoice have nothing to do with each other. Not only will you get their upfront pricing guarantee, but you will never see an upcharge. Their pricing system simply won't allow it. Master Electrical proudly serves from Logan to Santa Quinn. They do everything that has to do with electrical, and they're always open, including for emergency services. The phone number to call is 801-543-2222. 801-543-2222 or check them out online at masterelectrical.com. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Meese. Freeway traffic looking good and rolling along in the valley. If you happen to be on I-15 normal KSL travel times either direction between Ogden and Provo and no accidents reported on our freeways remain secondaries. Beat the spring cleaning rush and call Zero Res. Get three months plus a hallway Zero Resified for $99. Visit ZeroRes.com and book your appointment today. Zero Res. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. Our KSL weather. Cooler air from the weekend continues over Utah today. Then the sun comes out. It'll warm into the 70s by Thursday and Friday. And right now, 46 degrees, partly cloudy. I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Inside Sources. Inside Sources. America's voice of reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Well, many eyes are looking heavenward at the moment uh, with the total eclipse. President Biden is uh, looking for a little light in the re-election department. Uh, He is in Wisconsin today, a key battleground state, and he's looking to shed a little light and lift a little load for some of those with student debt. The question is, will this turn into real policy, real politics, or something in between? Let's begin. Think you know the news of the day? Think again with Boyd Matheson on KSL News Radio. Well, the uh, eclipse will clearly be the uh, the headlines all over the place today. Uh, the president has chosen to go to Wisconsin, a state he has to win, part of the big blue wall for Democrats and for the president in particular in the 2024 election cycle. He's going there to talk about student loan forgiveness once again, and we want to get beyond just the headline of that. It sounds nice. It sounds good. Uh, What does it really mean in terms of policy? And is this one more thing that the president is going to take action on from an agency rather than through Congress? And will it be eclipsed by the Supreme Court Court once again saying, not so fast, Uh, not in your lane, not your job? 
Uh, that's something that has to go through Congress. So we want to break it down just a little bit to start the show in terms of what this is and what it actually means. We're keeping our eye uh, on Wisconsin uh, while everyone else is looking uh, at the uh, totality of the eclipse uh, moving across the country. Uh, well, if the president does begin to speak, we may dip into that and hear how he's going to frame that for, in particular, young voters uh, that are uh, struggling under the, the weight of some of that debt. And so here's what the administration is announcing today. Uh, it says that as, the administration said that, that as many as 10 million borrowers could see debt relief of at least $5,000 or more. And while the plan will be announced in Wisconsin, uh, this is a long way away. I think that's really important to stress uh, that the headline is president is going to forgive some more student loan. The reality is this won't happen even under the best case scenarios until the middle to late 2025. So if you are uh, a borrower, if you do have some student loan debt and you may fall into one of these categories, uh, before you go out and uh, buy a vacation or a new car, uh, just realize that this is a long way away and I'm not sure it's going to hold up water or hold up in the end. And so we'll, we'll have to break all of that down. So as the president gets ready to make this announcement, Here's, here's kind of the framework of what they're announcing. And, and they have been clear, by the way, in the White House that the plan that they're rolling out today is not finished. The plan's not finished. So, uh, so many of these things could change. The idea behind it is that there are, are many of those with student loans that have been hit kind of with the runaway interest. In other words, they haven't made sufficient payments to where they're lowering the principal as they go along. Uh, and for many, even 20 years in, the total amount they still owe is larger than the amount they originally borrowed. And if you heard earlier in the day, I joined uh, Dave and uh, Dejanovic to talk about all of this. And uh, on one hand, you can say, oh, those poor people are struggling and, and that's getting worse for them. And this is why we always say there are two rules that always hold up. One is the math always wins when it comes to interest. Uh, there's no avoiding it. It doesn't sleep. It doesn't go away. Uh, the math always wins. And most people get crushed by the math. And whether that's borrowing for student loans, borrowing for a house you can't afford, uh, or anything you can't afford that you're buying on credit, it also applies to government. Uh, and we are now $34 trillion in debt as a nation uh, because the math always wins. And it will become a real issue for the country uh, where there won't be any choices left. There will be no more cans to kick down the road. And then the real hard conversations will begin. The math always wins. And the other is the absolute predictability of consequences, especially when it comes to borrowing money. There are absolute, very predictable consequences that come. So within the plan, uh, the way this would work, as it would for, again, some of those that would qualify and there's interesting parts of, again, the proposed plan. We don't know the actual plan because it's not done yet. Uh, but it would uh, forgive some of those who have been burdened by extra interest, uh, which has increased the principal of their loan. So maybe you started with a loan of $60,000. You didn't make uh, payments other than maybe the minimum requirement. Or maybe, maybe that uh, individual uh, took advantage of some of the things that were offered. And there are regular offers of, you can take a vacation of making your regular payments, just know that interest will continue to accrue on your loan. And for some people, that's been helpful to say, okay, I, I'm really struggling, struggling right now, so I can't make my full payment. Uh, so if I can take a six-month break from my payments, that might help me make ends meet. But you have to remember, the math always wins, which means that that interest continues to accrue, adding to your total amount that you owe. And so some people are getting a little crushed under that. And so some people would qualify under that for various reasons. Now, there's a portion of this rule. This is being done by rule, not by Congress, by law or legislation. This is by rule within the agency that uh, some, uh, regardless of their ability to pay, regardless of how much money they're currently earning, uh, could receive some tax uh, or could be given some debt forgiveness. Uh, so that's kind of one category. Then there are some other categories 
uh, for those who have been paying for more than 20 years and they're still, you know, at about where they began, so they haven't really made progress on that. There are some that are special circumstances and, and things that would uh, erase some of that uh, debt as well. Uh, people who have high medical debt, uh, for example, or child care uh, could be eligible under this particular rule. Now, the big questions are these. Uh, again, always sounds good. Uh, very helpful for the president in an election year of we're going to help the students in particular. Uh, and then the reality hits after that. So whenever they finish the job of making the plan, they'll roll that out. And my guess is, not surprisingly, they will do this in the fall. Uh, oh, I don't know, maybe September, October, just before a uh, first Tuesday in November election, where the president will be able to tout, look, I'm taking action uh, to help students who are being crushed by student loan debt. And so that will be another good headline piece. It will be a good political piece. It will be helpful to the president piece. And it, it will help some people, no question. But not then. <laughs> only, only in spirit will it help them. <laughs> only in their mental attitude will it help them. Because nothing will take place until at least, at least July of 2025. That's a long way out. And if there is a change in administration, the whole thing could go away. If there's a, a, make, a change in the makeup of Congress, it all could go away. Or someone could file a lawsuit, which we are certain there will be one on this. And then the Supreme Court could make it all go away. And so my problem with this kind of approach from the president is that it creates uncertainty rather than clarity for the very people that he says he's trying to help. I think he's genuine. I think he wants to help. But you don't really help when all you do is create uncertainty. And whether it's with student loan, immigration, health care, when you create more questions and you do clarity and certainty, it usually means we're not going down the right policy path because you can't get everybody to come along with you in the end. We'll be right back. Think again on Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson. It's been a rough winter for sure, but visitors are flocking to Box Elder County. Our feathered visitors, that is. Bear River Migratory Bird Refuge is busy hosting swans to swallows, geese to greeps. The spring migration is in full swing, and all that's missing is you. Box Elder County really is for the birds. Just a short 60 minutes north of Salt Lake, Box Elder County is the perfect place to make memories and celebrate spring, along with spending time with our feathered friends. You'll experience amazing restaurants and unique shopping. Come take a soak at Crystal Hot Springs, home to the highest mineral content of any natural hot springs in the world. Let the winter melt away as you relax and rejuvenate. Take in a theater performance at one of the live theaters or visit one of the fine museums. Visitors really are chirping all about Box Elder County. Check out visitboxeldercounty.com and see why Box Elder County is for the birds. That's boxeldercounty.com. Opening statements could be this week. This trial likely to take several weeks longer than Lori Vallow Daybell's trial. In the trial of Chad Daybell. Another factor is the death penalty. Get special coverage live from the courtroom. Breaking updates on testimony and legal analysis all this week. The trial of Chad Daybell. We have you covered on KSL News Radio. The IRS finally caught up with Louie. I hadn't paid my taxes in eight years. I owed the IRS a lot of money. Louie was in deep trouble. We're going to take your house, put a lien on your bank account, uh, garnish your pay. They don't care. They're going to take your paycheck. Louie found out about Optima Tax Relief, the leading tax resolution firm. A-plus rated by the Better Business Bureau, they've resolved over $1 billion for their clients. Optima Tax, they helped me. They calmed me down. They made me feel comfortable, and I trust them. Louie has a lot to be thankful for. I don't owe the IRS anymore, and I'm able to live a comfortable life, a lot better life. It was because of Optima Tax. For tax help you can trust, call Optima now for a free consultation. Take it from Louie. If you owe the IRS, don't go it alone. Give Optima Tax a call. They can help you. Call 800-343-6460. 800-343-6460. Optima Tax Relief. Testimonial from an actual client. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Hey, everyone. It's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. 
If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for less. And for a limited time, new customers receive their second month free when they sign up and use promo code MONTHFREE by May 31st. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up and call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Taxes, fees, and other third-party charges will apply. See website for additional details. We all know what UV rays can do to our skin, but they can also do damage to your car. Keep that from happening with 303 Protectant. 303 Protectant keeps the sun's harmful rays from causing fading and cracking in rubber, plastic, or vinyl surfaces. From the dashboard to the tires, 303 Protectant keeps your car looking new longer. Get 303 Protectant today at AutoZone. Visit 303radio.com for more information. Any Hour Services free furnace sale is going on right now. If you haven't scheduled your free estimate yet, do it now. Call Any Hour Services today or schedule online at anyhourservices.com. Jeff Kaplan. I'm energized by breaking news. First of all, because it's right now, and second of all, because in many cases, the audience needs to know. There's no more important service that we can provide, and I find it critically important to get more details to the audience as quickly as possible. There's nothing more energizing than that for me. Not at all. The most important thing we do is breaking news. I am gratified that so many people listen to me every afternoon on KSL, but what they don't know is that there are so many people behind the scenes making it happen, checking on the traffic, answering the phones, making the calls, talking to the newsmakers. They're out in the street, into the field to get the raw information and then putting it all together so that I can sit in front of a microphone and be a source of information every afternoon. But there are so many people who make it happen. That's what you don't know. Ride home with Jeff Kaplan. We Days, 3 to 7 on KSL News Radio. Mom and Dad used to argue about everything, especially about Dad's drinking. It drove me crazy. It got so bad, I couldn't do my homework. I couldn't concentrate. I absolutely refused to let any of my friends come to our house for any reason. I would have been humiliated if anyone found out how much my dad drank and how loud my mom screamed at him. My family went from totally crazy to quiet, calm, and even peaceful. The only thing that happened is my mom started going to Al-Anon family groups. Her relationship with my dad really changed. I asked mom if she would take me to her Al-Anon meetings or to Alateen. I wanted to see if I could have a better relationship with my dad. I'm sure glad I did. If someone's drinking troubling you, you might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon or Alateen family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-ALANON or go to alanon.org. At Social Security, we are always thinking of ways to save you time and make things easier. That's why we created My Social Security. Opening a My Social Security account gives you secure access to your personal record and interactive tools tailored for you. You can see if you are eligible to receive benefits, view spousal benefit estimates, and compare retirement benefit estimates at different ages or dates when you want to start receiving benefits. Already receiving benefits? Use your account to change your address, set up or change direct deposit, get a proof of income letter, and more. In most states, you can also request a replacement Social Security card. Save time. Go online. Open a My Social Security account at ssa.gov slash myaccount. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson. When we're trying to digest the news of the day, we have to remember that instant certainty is the enemy of truth. A flashy headline may distract you from the real issue and the important conversations underneath. Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson, 1 to 3 on KSL News Radio. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bomas. First, a jury has been chosen now for the trial of Chad Daybell in Boise. Second, attorneys suing UDOT over plans for a gondola in Little Cottonwood Canyon want the courts to combine three different cases into one. And third, hundreds of couples signed up for a mass wedding just before the peak of today's solar eclipse in Arkansas. Right now, 46 degrees, partly cloudy in Salt Lake City. And back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. 
Get deeper insights on the news from inside sources. Well, President Biden issued the clearest and sternest uh, warning, I think, thus far to Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, what happens next uh, will be very fascinating to look at. And in the meantime, uh, there is this escalating humanitarian crisis. And obviously with the death of seven uh, aid workers uh, who were really on uh, angels' errands there in terms of alleviating suffering. We want to get into the, the policy around that as we really look at famine looming in Gaza. Uh, really thrilled to have back on the program with us once again, Josh Rogan, uh, columnist for the Global Opinion section of the Washington Post, political analyst with CNN. And uh, Josh, welcome back to the show. Uh, great to be back. Thanks for having me. Uh, so as, as you watch this play out, great piece today, uh, by the way, as always, great thinking, Thank great you. writing. And uh, give us kind of your perspective, first kind of 30,000 and foot level in terms of where we are in all of this, and then let's get down to the practical tacticals in terms of policy. Right. Well, uh, where we are is, you know, six months into a war that's seen more than 30,000 uh, people killed, uh, of course, 1,200 people, 1,500 people or so killed on the Israeli side in the terrorist attack that sparked the war. Hostages are still trapped. Uh, the region seems to be at a, a boiling point. Violence in, over the Lebanese border, violence in Syria, violence in Yemen, and uh, no clear paths out of this crisis. That's the, the, the first 30,000-foot view. And yeah. then the second part of this is that you layer on uh, the crazy politics of the United States and the crazy politics of Israel. And what you get is, a, 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 in one sense, a stalemate where everyone is sort of committed to this. Uh, path that they're on, and nobody wants to blink, and nobody wants to say, wait a second, maybe there's a better way to do this thing. And at the same time, it's very clear that the uh, situation is getting worse. Uh, there's a, a, a famine is imminent, according to the UN. And, uh, you know, the suffering is just really getting out of control. And I think what we saw today from President Biden was an attempt to, one, acknowledge that in the more full-throated way that he has to date, and two, to promise to do something about it, which is a change of policy, but it's not actually doing something about it. It's sort of threatening to do something about it, you could say. Yeah, and, and that seems to be the interesting uh, series of mixed messages, I think, from the administration on on days. Uh, I, I kind of go back and equate it to that uh, unarmed you know, British Bobby who's you know, yelling stop or I'll yell stop again. Uh, and you had on one hand the president you know, being upset and infuriated, uh, and then, you know, moving forward on, you know, F-16s and bombs and, and those kinds of things. Do you think today changes that dynamic? Uh, and if it does change the dynamic, what do you see as the, the cracks or the uh, the opportunity moments uh, that could come on the horizon? Right. No, I think it, today is a, uh, an important day in uh, seeing how the White House is changing its strategy, because for months, uh, essentially, the plan was um, to to say a lot of things about what it wants the Israeli government to do, but never to threaten to use any real leverage. And the only real leverage they have, of course, is are the weapons that were, that the United States is supplying. And today, they crossed that Rubicon. They put it out there. They said if the Israeli government doesn't do more on the humanitarian front, it's minimize the billion casualties. And of course, this was uh, most illustrated by this week's uh, killing of seven aid workers with the World Central Kitchen, but it's an ongoing issue that if they don't do more, then the U.S. is going to do something unspecified. And everybody knows what that is, but they don't want to say it out loud. And so that is a pretty big step for them. Yeah. Uh, but it doesn't get you anywhere. That's my opinion. It doesn't get you mm. to the result that you're going to want, which is that the Israeli government changes its policy. It doesn't seem like they're going to do that. And so what I think we're going to see is an increasing political break between Washington and uh, the Israeli government. But uh, on the ground, actually, not much is going to change in terms of the level of violence. Yeah. You, you have pointed out a couple of things in your piece that I think are important and, and worth pursuing. And, and that is, even if there were just some of the changes uh, that you've mentioned that many of the aid organizations uh, are extremely frustrated by the sometimes arbitrary uh, inspections and that kind of process. Uh, is there is there anyone or, or any entity that can take over that inspection process, or is there any way to accelerate uh, what relief, what food, what supplies are 
in the region actually getting to those who need them. Right, right. Uh, of course, the Israeli government claims that there's no limit to the amount of aid that it allows through Gaza and uh, that it has a, an inspection process geared to- towards only military or dual-use military items. Uh, but every aid organization on the ground and tons of video and evidence uh, suggest it's just not the case. Uh, that the process of inspection is contributing to the exasperating the misery and starvation of, you know, about a million people at this point. And that's, uh, you know, is there an alternative to that system? Sure, there's plenty of them that you could think of, an international force, an Arab force, a U.N. Uh, uh, system, a U.S. system. But it practically that we can't really expect that any of those things are going to happen. So the practical solution is to pressure the Israelis to to let more aid flow in so these people don't starve. I think that's that's essentially what has to happen. And, you know, the the only per- country with that leverage is the United States. And, you know, what I – my sources in the White House say is that President Biden himself doesn't want to do it. In other, in other words, this policy comes from the president himself, and this is rooted in his deep-seated belief that, uh, that this is not uh, – a, a, that – you know, conditioning aid to Israel is not a place that he wants to go. Yet he's being dragged there by reality, by the politics of it, by the fact that, uh, you know, now U.S. credibility and U.S. influence uh, is on the line. And he has yeah. he has that to think of as well. So I think that's why you see them moving ever so slowly towards that uh, eventuality. Yeah. Uh, fascinating stuff. Great insight and perspective, as always. Josh Rogan, columnist for the Global Opinion section of The Washington Post, political analyst with CNN. Uh, Josh, as always, appreciate your perspective. And I'm sure we'll be talking again as this uh, very slowly continues to undulate along. And hopefully it gets towards ceasefire and hopefully towards relief uh, for those most in need. Josh, thanks for joining us today. Anytime. All right. Again, that's uh, Josh Rogan uh, from The Washington Post. And uh, it is so complex and complicated. I do think we need to mark today and watch this as a potential hinge point in a lot of this. Does it move towards a ceasefire? Are the demands ratcheted up as it relates to Israel? Uh, No one today has been uh, ratcheting up any expectations, by the way, on Hamas and the hostages. Uh, And so it's going to be interesting to see the politics of that play out. Uh, And in the meantime, how do you get aid to those innocent civilians and those that are suffering inside of Gaza There's a lot of things where a few little tweaks might just be that hinge point moment. We'll see how that plays out. We'll continue to follow it here on Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. We'll be right back. It's 1.30 at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bonas. KSL's top local story this hour. The murder trial for Chad Daybell can move ahead now that the court in Boise has chosen a jury. Twelve regular jurors, six alternates were picked from a pool of more than 50 who passed the initial screening. Chad Daybell is accused of murdering his first wife, Tammy, and two of his second wife's children, J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan. Opening arguments in the case could begin tomorrow. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. The Biden administration says it will monitor new efforts by Israel to make it easier for humanitarian aid to get into Gaza. At today's State Department briefing, spokesperson Matthew Miller said Israel is taking positive steps. 304 aid trucks entered Gaza, the highest number of trucks in any single day since the conflict began. That number represents a significant improvement, but it is important not just that we see the daily number continue to grow, but that it be sustained over time. That's ABC's Matthew Miller. Your money at this moment. The Dow Jones average uh, up on the day, 49 points. The NASDAQ is up 29. And our KSL weather. Looks like uh, the clouds are going to break up. We'll see some sunshine tomorrow. KSL News Time 131. We hope you have the right app on your phone for news. You probably have dozens. But the KSL News Radio app, well, it makes our live stream super easy. Plus, our talk shows are right there as podcasts for your workday. That's the app for KSL News Radio. Get ready for spring with the Greenhouse Show and Advanced Window Products. This Saturday, you can go to the, uh, 3052 South, 460 West from 8 to 11. The Greenhouse Show this Saturday. Utah's strong winds can cause huge damage to your roof that you can't see. Your roof might need repair. 
Don't wait for a disaster. Call the masters at Master Roofing for an honest inspection at 801-383-0072. Specializing in small repairs, Master Roofing handles everything from patching holes to full roof replacements. Schedule your free assessment at masterroofingutah.com. When you think of Utah's homeless, who do you see? They are people with names and faces, and many are in dire circumstances. They are men and women, and sometimes children. Many are living on the street, in a car, or in a shelter. Some choose to be homeless, most do not. Many experience the challenges of addiction or mental illness. All are vulnerable. Homelessness is a crisis, one that affects us all. Utah is building a coalition of community leaders and concerned citizens united to end the plight of homelessness. Homelessness should not mean hopelessness. Learn more at projecthumandignity.org. A message from Utah Impact Partnership. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Mace. Pretty quiet out there. We have good speeds on all the valley freeways. No accidents there or on your main secondaries. Lagoon is looking for ride maintenance technicians. Lagoon offers excellent mechanical training programs with amazing career opportunities. Ride maintenance technician position is full-time and year-round. Details, visit lagoonpark.com forward slash jobs. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. Our KSL weather, cooler air and clouds from the weekend will stay over Utah today. Then tomorrow, the sun comes out. It'll warm into the 70s by Thursday and Friday. Right now, 46 degrees, partly cloudy. I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather state. Inside Sources. Inside Inside Sources. America's voice of reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Well, if you're just joining us in the last segment, uh, we went through a conversation I had with Josh Rogan last week about what's happening in Israel, policy decisions that are being based on situations on the ground, and of course, the, the horrific. Events of last week with the uh, killing of seven aid workers inside of Gaza by uh, the Israeli forces. And uh, Israel did a quick investigation into that. Uh, They've discharged, I believe, two uh, members of the IDF and uh, uh, reprimanded a a number of others. Uh, And now the question is, how does all of that move forward? What does it do in terms of increasing uh, pressure internationally, the favorability, unfavorability of Israel on the world stage, and then the, the big question about what comes next. Uh, and so if you missed that, you can go back and listen to my conversation with Josh Rogan, of course, uh, on podcast. Just go to kslpodcast.com, uh, and you can find inside sources there. You can find clips of all of the uh, sessions and interviews that we do here every single day. Uh, and so now what I want to do is I want to extend the conversation a little bit uh, from the look back over the last week in terms of what has happened and how the dynamics have changed. And really interesting, the conversation with Josh Rogan from last week really was a precursor conversation, I think, to the conversation we'll have right now, because what happened over the weekend very much reflected the conversation we had last week and uh, some of the things that are coming up. And today there was a fascinating piece in the New York Times uh, by David French uh, talking about some of the mistakes that Israel has made and how some of them are a little bit of a repeat of mistakes America made in uh, in Iraq. Uh, and so really interesting in terms of uh, how all of this plays out. And so you look back at uh, some of the things that the U.S. has done in the past, and now we're seeing many of those same kinds of mistakes in terms of situation on the ground uh, that really matters. So uh, really interesting. So David French uh, began uh, talking about this uh, renewed insurgency uh, by Palestinian armed groups in northern Gaza. Uh, Renewed insurgency is kind of the key piece that David French uh, began his piece in The New York Times with, meaning that Israel was doing exactly what the U.S. did for much of the Iraq war. 
fighting again over ground that America had presumably already seized. So renewed insurgency. So that means you're gaining ground, you're gaining control of ground or spaces, and then you're losing it and having to renew uh, and, and go back at it again. And this is often the case when you're dealing with terrorist group. And I think one of the greatest challenges in the Middle East right now, especially for Israel, is it is very different, different for a, a nation uh, to be dealing with something that is not a nation that is just a loosely collected group, uh, whether they're terrorists, uh, whatever they might be. Uh, So they are non-state actors, meaning they don't have to play by anybody's rules because they are the rule. And so I think it's a real challenge because how do you negotiate with that? How do you, what what do you demand of that? Who, Who gets held accountable for that? And I think that's part of the reason why Israel is saying, look, we have to stamp out Hamas completely. Uh, they've been uh, Israel has been using the analogy of a house fire. Uh, are you content just putting out eighty percent of a house fire and walking away, uh, or do you have to get it all the way until it's done? And then, of course, you have to counterbalance that with the humanitarian side of all of this and the innocents that have already died and and those that are under threat of uh, famine and, and want of many kinds. Uh, so how do you balance all of that? And then who do you negotiate that with? And how do you help those innocent civilians inside of Gaza uh, be able to gain control of their own space? And, and who are they dealing with? Uh, if it's uh, simply Hamas, uh, that's, that's pretty tough, I think, for a citizen inside of Gaza, uh, for those Palestinians to have confidence in any kind of future if they're not part of Hamas. So that becomes problematic. So you can see the mental gymnastics of this get pretty complicated pretty fast. One of the things that David French pointed out in his piece is that one of the things that the U.S. has been trying to learn, I don't know if we've always learned it, is that you can't preserve victory unless you really meet the needs of the citizens, their most basic needs. And in this case, for Israel, that's going to be the Palestinians inside of Gaza. That if those basic needs are not met, then this just becomes a breeding ground for more hate, more contempt, more radicalization uh, that happens very easily when some of those basic needs are not met. So one of the questions that dominates the discourse is whether Israel's behavior as it battles Hamas complies with the laws of war and and Israel's own moral standards. So when you look at that kind of question, uh, the laws of war and Israel's own moral standard, uh, those are things that you can do inside of a nation. But when you're dealing with a terrorist group, you're negotiating against a group that doesn't have laws and their moral standards are pretty clear in terms of Hamas because they believe they're, they're there to... Wipe Israel off the map. Again, tough to negotiate. Hard to get to all of that. Now, I think some of the important lessons that Israel can learn from some of the United States' efforts in the past, foreign wars, uh, is obviously you have to deal with combat operations in the front end uh, and then how you regulate that along the way. In other words, setting up a transition to a permanent civilian control. I think that's the biggest challenge in all of this inside of Gaza is even if Israel walked away all of it today, what comes next? Uh, If Hamas remains in power, I don't think that's necessarily good for the vast majority of the Palestinians inside of Gaza. And clearly it's not good for Israel and their own safety and security. Uh, interesting piece uh, today at Deseret.com uh, talking about inside uh, of Israel after the October 7th attack. Uh, really interesting uh, piece that uh, you can check out there in terms of kind of the on-the-ground play out of all of that. Uh, now, I want to go back to the David French piece for just a moment. Uh, he talked about the fact that the American military uh, 
was able to turn the tide during some of these surges by looking at a, a really interesting approach, uh, protect the population being the most important thing. Uh, and then also making sure that um, that we have this understanding of those who are helpful to us. You have to have their back all the way to the end. I think if you go to Afghanistan and the withdrawal from Afghanistan, uh, that is uh, that was clearly an area of grave mistake uh, where the U.S. did not protect those that had helped us along the way, those who had been part of key allies, interpreters, uh, those who assisted uh, in the efforts in so many different ways. And so as we look at this whole thing six months in, six months since uh, October the 7th, uh, Hamas's massacre of Israeli civilians means that Israel possesses both the legal right and the moral obligation to its people to end Hamas's rule and destroy its effectiveness as a fighting force. Uh, that according uh, uh, to the, the piece in the, the New York Times today from David French. Uh, and so they do have that piece of the puzzle. The question is, uh, do they make the mistake to think that defeating it in battle is at odds with the legal and moral obligation of a large-scale humanitarian effort to feed and protect those civilians of Gaza? I think that's going to be the real test and the real struggle in all of this. We're going to hear a lot in the coming days uh, about rat- ratcheted up uh, ceasefire calls, uh, desires to have more aid going in, and some of that has begun in terms of more uh, checkpoints and crossings where aid can come into Gaza. Uh, and then, of course, you have the hostages. Uh, and there's no, to me, there's just nothing there. They are hostages. They should be set free. And so someone should be calling for that Uh, and not just uh, for the ceasefire. Uh, There has to be a balance there. Complicated and complex. We'll continue to watch it and try to get underneath the headlines of it all on Inside Sources. We'll step aside for a quick break. More Inside Sources coming up next. Beat the spring cleaning rush with big savings and priority booking by calling Zero Rest. Dust, dander, and bacteria are living and breeding in your carpet, upholstery, air ducts, and more with nowhere to go. The spring season allergens such as pollen are coming out of hibernation ready to invade your home. Check out the 3,300 raving customer reviews with a 4.8 Google rating and see what the hype is all about. This month, get three rooms zero resified from Salt Lake's number one carpet cleaner starting at just 99 bucks and they'll throw in a free hallway. Plus, take 25% off your air duct cleaning to get that true spring cleaning feel. Call Zero Res right now, 801-288-9376, or go online to ZeroRes.com and say you want the KSL special, Zero Res. Spell it backwards or forwards. It's the right way to clean. Sign up for KSL Text Alerts and you could win cash. Text the word cash to 57500 for a chance to win $250. That's cash to 57500. Plus, you'll get breaking news and traffic updates right to your phone. Want to win more prizes? Text contest to 57500. Jazz fans, text the word jazz for breaking Utah jazz news. And Cougar fans, text BYU to 57500 for the latest on the Cougars. Message and data rates may apply. For an alternate entry method and complete contest rules, go to KSL News Radio. This Friday from 10 to 1, the movie show comes to Sound Sleep Medical. But first, take the time to learn about a better night's rest. Sound Sleep Medical delivers oral appliance therapy that treats sleep apnea without the use of CPAP machines. They're professionally fit, warranted, and covered by most major medical insurance. In the days of a poor night's sleep, Sound Sleep Medical will help. Call Sound Sleep Medical at 801-716-8672 for details. Sound Sleep Medical. Do you have an IRA or 401k? It's natural to think of this as being your money, right? But remember, you still have to pay taxes when you withdraw this money in retirement. And you could be paying a lot more in taxes on these accounts than you know. A lot more. Learn the strategies that can help you reduce or eliminate your taxes in retirement. Don't miss a special edition of Retirement Solutions Radio. This Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock. 
right here on KSL News Radio 1027. Attention, Dave's Bernina in Provo and St. George just finished a three day event in Vernal and is now offering these just out of the box, brand new Bernina machines at tremendous discounts with full warranties. Save thousands on the Bernina sewing, quilting, and embroidery 735, 790, and 770 CAFE machines, featuring unmatched quality and ease of use. Many of these machines have special offers and come with free gifts with purchase. We also have a few L890 sergers and a sit-down Q16 quilting machine. Hurry in. Quantities are limited. All other exciting Bernina machines in our stores are on sale, too. Plus, we'll have discounts on Bernina accessories and zero-interest financing options. Come to Dave's Bernina now at 691 East St. George Boulevard and 2017 North 550 West in Provo while supplies last. Davesbernina.com. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. At 4 in the morning, my phone rang. They said, I regret to inform you that your husband was wounded in action. Victor sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. I was doing school full-time, and I was also then caring for Victor. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. I just didn't want to forget that I also had goals and that I also had a life. What I did is I challenged Victor to meet me halfway. There are almost six million military and veteran caregivers across the nation. We have our own journey, and we can fulfill that journey at the same time that we are helping our loved one. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veteran's guide to navigate your caregiving journey and better care for your loved one and yourself. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Any hour services can help unclog any drain in your house. Whether you have a backup, a clog, or a slow drain you want fixed, call Any Hour Services or visit anyhourservices.com. Dave and Degenovic. You may not be interested in everything we talk about, but I guarantee you listen for three hours, we're going to hit several things. Everything from politics to how the economy is impacting your family's pocketbook. Listen for Dave and Degenovic, 9 to noon on KSL News Radio. Do you worry about how much someone drinks? Do you feel angry or depressed most of the time? Do you feel neglected or unloved? Do you feel you attract people who tend to be compulsive or abusive? Do you have money problems because of someone else's drinking? Are you afraid or embarrassed to bring your friends home? Do you feel that if the drinker loved you, she or he would stop drinking? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you are not alone. More than half of all adults have a family history of alcoholism. Not everyone trapped by alcohol is an alcoholic. Families and friends are suffering too. Al-Anon and Alateen can help. Call 1-866-200-0223 or visit alanon.org slash help. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bonas. First, according Boise has finished picking a jury to hear the murder case against Chad Daybell. Second, many more aid trucks have been getting into Gaza, still not enough to meet the need. And a new sexual assault and domestic violence hotline will focus on the Native American community in Utah. Right now, 46 degrees, partly cloudy in Salt Lake City. And back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Hear elevated conversation on crucial issues. Boyd Matheson on Inside Sources. Welcome back to Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. It is great to be with you today. As always, I am Boyd Matheson. And of course, over the weekend, if you were anywhere on KSL News Radio, we had you covered for the annual Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints General Conference. And we wanted to do a, just a quick look back in terms of some of the things that played out uh, over the weekend. And uh, as always, uh, we're pleased to have joining us in studio, 
Sarah Jane Weaver, executive editor of the Church News, host of the weekly Church News podcast. And uh, Sher- uh, Sarah, yeah, I'm surprised you're still standing at, uh, after a big weekend. <laughs> well, it is great to be here, and I'm always willing and happy to talk about such an exciting thing like General Conference was this weekend. Yeah, and it was uh, more people on uh, Temple Square and in the conference center than they've had uh, really since pre-pandemic. And so that there was an interesting energy and buzz about all of that and uh one of the thoughts that I had over the weekend was this is almost just like a big broadcast studio, though, because the, the vast majority of the, the millions who participated over the weekend uh, were somewhere else. Yeah, wasn't it great? Downtown Salt Lake City felt different than it has in years. Uh, the church put the Moroni statue back atop the Salt Lake Temple just before conference. Mm. Uh, the plaza between uh, the church administration building and the church office building and the temple um, now bears flags from many, many, many nations representing an international church. And it felt like that energy just flowed back and forth from the conference center to the Mm. grounds um, where the temple is still under construction, but things did feel a little more alive than they have in a while. Yeah, there was definitely an energy there, uh, to be sure. And as the uh, conference came to a conclusion, uh, as has become his uh, signature trademark, uh, President Russell M. Nelson uh, announced that the work is continuing, uh, particularly as it relates uh, to temples and uh, a host of uh, fascinating locations for new temples. Yes, so President Nelson, at the end of General Conference, announced 15 new temples for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. That brings the total number of temples that are announced under construction or dedicated to 350. Uh, It was interesting. Several of the brethren talked about uh, how many temples there were when they were born or when they were in school. And that number has just grown so much in recent years. In fact, 168 of the church's 350 temples have been announced in the last six years by President Nelson. Mm, That's so fascinating. Give us a quick snapshot of a a couple of those locations. Uh, Pretty interesting all around the world. Well, you know, uh, we're seeing a new temple in French Polynesia, a growing number of temples in Mexico and Argentina and Brazil. People were excited to hear a temple for Scotland. Um, And so, uh, as well as two temples for Utah, Mm. one one in Lehigh, and the other in, in West Jordan. Yeah, fascinating. Uh, I did think it was interesting that uh, President Russell M. Nelson, uh, who is uh, knocking on the door of 100, he'll be 100 in September of this year. Uh, he, he was one of those who referenced when uh, when he was born, there were, what, six? Six. Six temples, and now uh, well over 300. Uh, that, that's an uh, amazing uh, testament just in and of itself. Uh, give give us a sense of those who spoke, some of the things that were said. What were some of your key takeaways as you, as you look at that? Well, if I had to identify three themes from conference, it would be, number one, there is great joy in in living or being accountable to God. Mm. And and so speakers identified that, that if you want to find joy, they have a path for that. Uh, the second thing, um, people talked and shared a lot about testimony. How to, how to believe in this day and age when believing seems a little harder, when society is polarized and when people don't really know what information to trust. Speakers talked about how do we believe? How do we share our testimony? And then the, pre, the prevailing theme of conference was, of course, covenants. Mm. And uh, President Dallin H. Oaks talked about what a covenant is and how to fulfill covenant responsibilities and he said, the Church of Jesus Christ has always emphasized um, a commitment and keeping covenants with God. Mm, I think that's so fascinating and so interesting to look at that from a global perspective and beyond just the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints uh, in terms of how people take that into the public square with that confidence. Uh, Elder Ulises Suarez talked about covenant confidence and taking that out. Uh, I thought it was an interesting juxtaposition uh, that you had the uh, the head coach of South Carolina uh, women's basketball team wins the national championship. Uh, and she had said something over the weekend uh, uh, about just how, uh, what a great sense of humor God must have. Uh, and she described her journey of going from a devastating loss and loss of a lot of her players and her own personal journey, and now here they are back uh, in there. Uh, but she said, uh, if, if, you, uh, if you don't, uh, Scar, she said, uh, God's really funny, 
he says, if if you don't believe in God, something is wrong with you. Yeah. Isn't this a great time to talk about taking our religious beliefs into the public square, to talking about how we believe, and and for it to be okay to say, I believe in God, I want to have a relationship with him. Um, and, and I think that there were other things about conference that showed that this is not just a ph- phenomenon in Utah or the United States, but across the globe um, during general conference. The church sustained 11 new general authority 70s. These are the leaders that go out, that serve in area presidencies across the, the world. And, and 11 is a big number. Yeah. Uh, they also uh, gave seven general authorities a meritus status or released them. And so the fact that they're calling more than they're releasing may indicate that this work is growing. <laughs> Most definitely. And I do think it was interesting. I was having a conversation with a colleague and... Uh, I thought it was interesting that uh, before the conference, President Nelson actually posted on social media that some of us are getting older and some of us might record our message, uh, which they ended up doing. Uh, and so if you look at the uh, the conference through that lens uh, of older people on the stage there, uh, I think it's one of those where you choose a lens and a perspective because, as, as you just pointed out, many of those new lead- leaders coming from the far corners of the world – uh, and also, if you just turn the camera around, if you were looking from the rostrum uh, out at the audience, uh, it was young. It was very diverse. It was uh, from all over the world that had just come here to Salt Lake City. And that's what they see. I think the leaders of the Church of Jesus Christ see youth and global and international. Uh, and uh, and I think it's just an interesting perspective in terms of the lens you look at. Yeah, and if you had asked me what my tender moment of conference was— mm-hmm. What, what was my personal takeaway from conference? I loved the interactions of the senior leaders of the church. I, I loved seeing how they care for each other, how they greet each other, how they greet and, and talk to and care for their wives. Um, I loved seeing the sister leaders on the stand. Um, you know, I think everyone was worried this conference. We have leaders that are aging uh, what will it look like to have a leader come in or out in a wheelchair or or some other assistance? Yeah. And in the end, nobody cared at all about that. <laughs> nobody cared one iota about how they were getting to the stand. Yeah. It was that members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints who sustained these leaders were so happy they were there, and they were very, very anxious to learn from them, hear their testimonies, and and amplify their words. Yeah. Great perspective as always, Sarah Jane Weaver, Executive Editor of The Church News. That's going to wrap up hour number one of Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. When we come back for hour number two, we're going to start with some cosmic perspective and an, an interesting sit down conversation I had with one of those senior leaders, Jeffrey R. Holland. Uh, I want to connect that to the eclipse, the cosmic perspective, and a a piece of advice we all need to follow. We'll be right back. KSL FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. This is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. It's two o'clock at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bomas. KSL's top story this hour, 12 jurors and six alternates are now in place for the murder trial of Chad Daybell, but they have to comply with some strict rules laid down by the judge. They have to wait until deliberations begin to discuss the case at all, and if they uh, have to, uh, they have to tell the judge if anybody else tries to talk to them about it. Opening arguments could begin tomorrow. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. People look to the sky everywhere from Eagle Pass, Texas to Portland, Maine today to see the total solar eclipse. ABC's Maggie Rooley watched it in Russellville, Arkansas. We're waiting. Do you hear that? Do you guys hear that? That's the foghorn. We can take the glasses off now. Oh, my. It is so incredible. Oh, my gosh. Witnessing this, there is nothing like it. I mean, you feel like it's otherworldly. Hundreds of thousands of people travel to towns all along the path of totality. Your money at this moment, the Dow Jones average uh, uh, down just a bit, the NASDAQ up just a bit today. And our KSL weather looks like the sun will be coming out this week. That's next. KSL News Time 201. 
It's a priority for us at this station to bring you all sides of a story and to talk about the news fairly, completely. Get all the facts and be really aware. Utah's Morning News with us, Tim and Amanda. Weekday mornings, 5 to 9 on KSL News Radio. An emergency can happen any second. Here's a few seconds to think about where you'd go. When you need medical care fast, the closest emergency room is a smart thing to know. Common Spirit Health ERs are your direct path between feeling scared or uncomfortable and feeling better. Find emergency care in your neighborhood at mountain.commonspirit.org. Hey guys, do you know your tea level? Revive Men's Health here in Salt Lake City is helping you take that first step toward better health and enhanced intimacy with a free testosterone level test, exam, and consultation. Plus, for this month only, qualified patients can kickstart their treatment with a free supply of ED medication. Call Revive Men's Health Salt Lake City at 801-263-7777. That's 801-263-7777. Or visit revivemenshealth.com. Your neighbor Greg loves the springtime here in Utah, but he hates to paint, so he called Rhino Shield. We live in a beautiful two-story home that was built in 1916. Really been prepped and painted very, very poorly. Rhino Shield ceramic technology is formulated for our unique climate here in Utah and is class one fire rated. We really had a lot of detail work in the team at Rhino Shield. We spent really four days just on the prep work, and we were so excited to see that. And the cleanup was just impeccable. Utah, get the 25 year guaranteed protection of Rhino Shield right now for 15% off the regular price. We've gotten numerous compliments and we've actually even had some of the longer term residents of our community thank us for, for protecting the integrity of our home. This offer is limited so call now 435-246-4466 435-246-4466 or rhinoshieldwest.com Go Rhino Shield! There are products that offer up to a 20% upfront bonus just for opening an account and up to 12% per year for retirement income. I'm Jeff Jr. with Trajan Wealth, and I've heard from other advisors saying this is too good to be true. No, it's not. We are one of the few who can offer products like these because we're independent. We're not registered with a broker-dealer who tells us what we have to sell, and we don't have to answer to a board of directors who prioritize shareholders over clients. So, is an upfront bonus up to 20% and 12% per year growth for income too good to be true? For most advisors, yes, but not Trajan Wealth. The fact that many of our clients come from other financial advisors is a testament to our value. Experience the Trajan Wealth difference for yourself. Call 801-899-7600. That's 801-899-7600. Guarantees are based on the claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's DinoPay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Meese. Salt Lake City PD just wrapping up a crash at 7th West 1300 South and in Draper. The ramp is now blocked to traffic from Bangador Highway to southbound I-15 due to a vehicle fire. Beat the spring cleaning rush and call Zero Res. Get three rooms plus a hallway. Zero Resified for $99. Visit ZeroRes.com and book your appointment today. Zero Res. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. Our KSL weather, cooler air from the weekend stays over Utah today. Then tomorrow, sun comes out. It'll warm into the 70s by Thursday and Friday. And right now, 48 degrees, partly cloudy. I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com for Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Inside Sources. Inside, Inside Sources. Sources. America's Voice of Reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Well, with millions of Americans looking skyward today at the eclipse, there are many questions. <laughs> It's an extraordinary experience to watch play out as it moves its way uh, across the country. And the question for me beyond the headline of millions experiencing this very rare total solar eclipse, uh, I think there's a, a lesson and some questions to ask 
around what that cosmic perspective we gain in an event like the eclipse actually means. Let's begin. Think you know the news of the day? Think again with Boyd Matheson on KSL News Radio. Well, while so many Americans are looking up uh, with the solar eclipse today, uh, it's inspired, of course, a lot of wall to wall news coverage on uh, most of the major networks across the country, headlines everywhere. Uh, and the rarity of the events, I think, have caused uh, a lot of folks to just stop for a minute, which is a good thing, uh, to look heavenward, contemplate the vastness of space, the immensity of the universe and our place in it as human beings living on uh, this crazy planet Earth that we live on. I think we've been long overdue for this kind of moment of cosmic perspective, especially when you look at where we are around the world and right here in the United States in the midst of a lot of political posturing, a lot of grandstanding. we got presidential debates and uh, contests going on. We've got the, the White House, the national media, all kinds of battles and I think it's important for us to, to revisit from time to time some of those important principles uh, that would be leaders or should be leaders, and all of us for that matter, might benefit from uh, as we look at the world with a cosmic perspective. A good friend and mentor of mine, Barry Packer, uh, popped into my office a number of years ago and, and made the audacious suggestion that I should pick up a little book by Neil deGrasse Tyson. The title, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry. Now, of course, I can uh, qualify for the in a hurry portion of the title, but I wondered what in the world or what in the universe uh, I would need the astrophysics part of all of this. And I had no idea I was about to be taught a really important lesson about the cosmic perspective. So in this little book, Astrophysics for People in a Hurry, in the last chapter, uh, Tyson delivers the powerful, surprising definition of the cosmic perspective. And listen to this. This is important. He simply wrote, the cosmic perspective is humble. Humility as the essence of cosmic perspective was really perspective changing for me. Uh, he makes a compelling case that once we recognize that we are not the center of the universe and realize how small we are, in relationship to the immensity of the planets and the systems and the galaxies, uh, we get a new kind of humility, I think, that can actually transform the way we interact with each other. So recognizing that space and recognizing that lesson, that the cosmic perspective, that many are looking up with awe and wonder with the eclipse today, I actually had the opportunity over the weekend, many of you caught at least portions of my uh, sit-down interview uh, with President Jeffrey R. Holland, acting president of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, uh, someone who's been in, in some real challenges over the last couple of years relating to his health, uh, the passing of his wife, uh, and I asked him about that and what perspective he gained and what he learned, and little did I know he was going to talk about the cosmic perspective. Take a listen. M more humility... Uh, in a year or a couple of years than I have had in my whole life. I suppose that means I'm supposed to have had it. I'm supposed to have been humble. But I, I've learned to, uh, to yield and to understand that there are all kinds of things in our life we can't control and that uh, we need to just give over to God and I, I've taught that all my life. I haven't always needed to do it. Uh, I've been a little too independent, a little too self-sufficient, I suppose. But now with neuropathy, I can't walk uh, very uh, gracefully at least. Uh, and with uh, kidney failure, I have to do much that I do in between dialysis sessions. So my life is very different than it used to be. And I've, uh, I've been required to accept that. Uh, it's the way life is going to be. Um, I've, I've taught that you hit the pitch that's thrown to you. Now suddenly I am not a pitcher, I'm a batter. And, and I have to hit um, what, I've, uh, what I've been given. So we'll, we'll make it do. We'll try to have faith and uh, go as far as we can go for as long as we can go. 
That was my conversation with President Jeffrey R. Holland of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And uh, the fact that he'd gone through some of these challenges and that the thing that he learned was humility. Uh, That's really instructive to me, very insightful. And it ties into this cosmic perspective that we've been talking about uh, that uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson says is humility. So once we recognize our humble space in the universe, uh, everything changes. You know, all of these trifling arguments, social media tantrums, resentment over trivial matters, all that would go away. Uh, You may recall a conversation we had with Dr. David Bob. Uh, He has a book that everybody should read. It's called Humility, an Unlikely Biography of America's Greatest Virtue. Now, I'm sure there are some people who would question whether humility is America's greatest virtue. I actually think it is, and you can go back to the founders uh, and see how they taught it, how they lived it, how they tried to apply it. Uh, But Dr. David Bob wrote it this way in his book. He said, Cocksure, supercilious, and narcissistic displays of arrogance abound in every arena of life, while acts of humility go unnoticed and unheralded. Our age of arrogance obscures the idea that humility is the indispensable virtue for the achievement of greatness. Uh, We could spend the next uh, hour and a half of the show just talking about that uh, particular idea, that humility is the indispensable virtue uh, to achieving greatness. Arrogance, as we know, is unteachable, intolerant, tyrannical. Those who possess it uh, may uh, may amass some power for a moment, Uh, but they'll never really lead others to higher levels. They'll never have a a real legacy. Uh, I think humility has a reverence for new ideas and awe for the inspirations that other people have. Uh, And they also, uh, those who have humility, understand that no one one is irreplaceable. Uh, So those who possess humility are, are prone to carefully consider things they never had supposed while fostering the development of far superior solutions. So the humility of the cosmic perspective, I think that's what transforms a manager into a leader, an instructor into a teacher, a politician into a statesman, an acquaintance into a trusted friend. And going back to our friend, Dr. David Bob, he said, humility enables courage and points wisdom in the right direction. I love that. It's the backbone of temperance, and it actually makes love possible. American history has been driven by such humble citizen servants who, while having passion and drive and ambition and all of those things, recognized their place in the universe and were willing to play their part in the miracle of it all. So I think it's time for America to take a little of that cosmic perspective and return to humility and all the benefits that come with it. The humility to admit when we're wrong, confess when we don't have all the answers, seek to understand those we disagree with, and ask forgiveness, and being willing to play our part in our families and communities. The cosmic perspective, I think, would change all of us and change the world if we would just apply it. We'll be right back. Think again on Inside Sources with Boyd Matheson. Devotion to country, service to Utah. Brent Oren Hatch had a front row seat watching his father serve our state faithfully in the Senate. A constitutional conservative and lifelong Republican, Brent Oren Hatch is a champion for the rule of law. He's running for Senate to stop this lawless president from destroying our country from within. Hatch will fight to secure the border once and for all and take on Mexican drug cartels to halt the flow of deadly fentanyl. Brent Oren Hatch knows the national debt is just as big a threat to national security. Hatch won't rest until the budget's balanced and won't cave to the big spenders in both parties. Pro-life, deeply committed to religious liberty, rock-solid Utah conservative. Brent Oren Hatch for Senate. Paid for by Conservative Outsider PAC, which is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. www.copac.us Every single show on KSL News Radio is part of the KSL app, so you can listen when you want. Get news with Tim and Amanda when you wake up. Just hit live on the app. Join the conversation with David Dejanovic at 9 and Boyd Matheson at 1. They're on the app, so you can listen at work. Just click on the podcast tab and never miss an episode of Jeff Kaplan's Minute of News. Yeah, he's there on the app. It's so easy. 
Get in your phone's app store and download the mobile app for KSL News Radio. When the weather warms up, it's like a stampede, except instead of dust stirred up by hundreds of hooves, it's a cascade of phone calls to advanced window products. This is Jeff Kaplan. Soon as the sun shines and the snow's gone, people want new windows and frames from Utah's number one custom window maker, and the wait for installation grows longer. But right now, you can get near the front of the line by calling for a quote and get $2,500 off when you purchase 10 windows or more. That's on top of the incredible savings for the highest quality double pane windows and frames, any style, any color. See, at Advanced Window Products, they actually build the windows here in Utah, they install the windows, and they guarantee them for life. There's no middleman, and they can pass the savings on to you. They even offer buy now, pay later. So get in before the wait grows longer and get the $2,500 off. Get your new windows this spring. Make the call. Advanced Window Products, 801-850-9100. That's 801-850-9100 or visit advancedwindowsusa.com. And now another no-brainer money-saving tip from Progressive. It looks like your luggage is over 50 pounds. Is there anything you can take out? Oh, yeah. Let me just toss all these $20 bills. Great. Let me grab you a trash can. Stop. Instead of throwing money away, move some clothes into a carry-on. And here's a better tip from Progressive on how not to waste money. Don't pay too much for car insurance. Drivers who switch and save could save hundreds. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Potential savings will vary. Not available in all states. I lock up my Old Spice Fiji Aluminum Free Dry Spray to keep that 24-7 lasting freshness safe for myself. Fresh coconuts, palm trees in the wind. It's like catching waves in Fiji. Actually, I just talked myself into a refreshing spritz of Fiji. My Old Spice is missing! No! (laughs) Derek Overstreet, founder of the New Millennium Group. We're a financial planning firm. Listen, we're fiduciaries. We have advisors standing by right now to take your call. That's 888-999-6370. 888-999-6370. The reason you're going to want to call is we're going to help you retire three to five years before you thought possible. Now, imagine how that would be if you could actually retire three to five years sooner than your plan was. The way we do this is by putting together a step-by-step plan, taking into consideration any rental properties that you have, any pension income that you have, your social security. Listen, we put that all together for you in writing. It will allow us to to build your income based on inflation. You know, inflation has been rapidly rising. You and I both need a plan that whatever we start out our income at, in five or 10 years, we're going to need 40% more income. So if you're one of those people listening and you'd like a plan in writing, give us a call at 888-999-6370. That's 888-999-6370 or go to utahsfinancialplanner.com. Any Hour Services free furnace sale is going on right now. If you haven't scheduled your free estimate yet, do it now. Call Any Hour Services today or schedule online at anyhourservices.com. With the three things you need to know this hour, I'm Dan Bonas. First, a jury is in place now to hear the murder case against Chad Daybell. Second, President Biden says huge student loan debts are a drag on the U.S. economy. Third, people were cheering the total eclipse of the sun today clear across the United States. Right now, 48 degrees, partly cloudy in Salt Lake City. And back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Boyd Matheson divides rage from reason on Inside Sources. Well, one more head-scratching moment coming out of Washington, D.C. House Republicans have set a target on working from home. Small Business Administration has come under fire for extreme remote policies. But are we setting a double standard for small businesses? Uh, The policy uh, policing our community's entrepreneurs will not get things back to the way they were There is no going back to the way things were, and we shouldn't be going there anyway. We should be going forward, and we have to maintain small businesses. That is the heart and soul of the economy. It is it's the heart and soul of freedom. We've talked about it a lot on this program. Those small businesses, those little entrepreneurial business, fuel freedom all around the country. And so it's a little bit of a head scratcher. So we wanted to dig underneath the headlines of all of this. Really pleased to have uh, joining us on the program today, Dr. Gleb Sapersky. Uh, who uh, serves as the CEO of the Hybrid Work Consultancy, disaster avoidance expert, and is the author of Returning to the Office and Leading Hybrid and Remote Teams. This is a really important conversation. And uh, Dr. Sapersky, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for having me on. Really appreciate it, Boyd. 
All right. So let's start with uh, what is actually is going on here. Small businesses are where innovation happens, where all so many of the good things and where most of the employment happens in the country. Uh, so tell us what is at stake here and what is being targeted? You're absolutely right, Boyd. So indeed, the large majority of the new employment is happening in small businesses and especially for people who are uncomfortable with the direction that large corporations are going, including the return to office, many are choosing to open up small businesses. So there's increasing amounts of entrepreneurialism going on. And however, the House Republicans, the House Small Business Committee Chairman Roger Williams and his another, and he's a Republican from Texas, and also Representative Mark Alford, the Republican from Montana, sent a letter to the FBA, Small Business Administration, saying that our small business owners don't have the luxury to work from home, and the small business associations should be marching to the same tune. And that's a quotation. But of course, that's completely wrong. Mm, and so break that down for us in terms of how that is actually playing out. What does it actually look like uh, in small businesses today? Sure. So let's go to the data. So the Q1 Scoop Flex Index, and by the way, the Scoop Flex Index, Flex Index is an index of how companies in different demographics, industries, sizes are approaching hybrid work. It found that 74% of companies with less than 500 employees, so when we think about small businesses, a good definition is less than 500 employees, 74% adopted fully flexible arrangements for remote-capable staff. So remote-capable staff and small businesses, 74% of them are of those companies adopted fully flexible, meaning you can come to the office, you can work from home, whatever. Looking at businesses employing 500 to 5,000 individuals, so the next level up, that's middle market businesses, middle-sized businesses. Only 34% of them have such flexibility for remote-capable workers. And looking at large companies, 25,000 plus, only 15% of those have fully flexible schedules for remote-capable employees. So we already see that the Small Business Administration's policies, the government policies, are quite in line with what small businesses do, and that the House Republican letter about that is completely wrong. But it's not only that source. Let's look at another source. So Nucleus Commercial Finance Research found that an important aspect for why small businesses have this approach to flexibility is economic pragmatism. There's, of course, we know about the economy. It's worrisome, might be recession, not the lack of certainty. So 79% of businesses that they surveyed are using telework to curtail expenses, 79%, compared to large companies, which are, of course, much less concerned about expenses. And finally, talking about Glassdoor. Glassdoor is a company that evaluates employee retention, recruitment, and what it found is that access to and satisfaction with work-from-home benefits have fallen last year for the largest companies while rising for small, medium-sized businesses because they are able to offer, offer that flexible work and large companies are mandating the return to office. So that's all the headlines we see about large companies, while small businesses are flying under the radar and they're actually much more flexible than large companies. Yeah, and I think that's a, an interesting component to all of this. And you pointed out uh, this out in your piece at The Hill, thehill.com. Everyone should check that out today. Uh, you talked about one of the important things uh, for the country, I think, and that is that the the dynamism, the, the resilience mm -hmm. that small businesses have – uh, yeah. are things that we should be celebrating and amplifying and extending, not controlling or regulating. Absolutely, Boyd. And that's what we're seeing in small businesses always, that they are always more flexible, they're always more resilient, and they're always where the future is. The future is not with large companies. The future is with small businesses because it's the small businesses that will eventually grow into the large companies. And we're seeing that small businesses are increasingly flexible, they're offering flexibility to their employees. They're looking at their bottom line, and they're seeing that their bottom line in terms of the return on investment, it is the cheapest way to hire employees. It is the cheapest way to run a business. It is the most profitable way to run a business. They get the best profit margin. And they are minimally fat compared to large companies. They cut the fat, and they see that this is the best way to run a business. So it's pretty ludicrous for House Republicans on the Small Business Committee in the House to say that the Small Business Administration 
should still return to the office because it's what small businesses are doing. It's completely wrong. It's the opposite. Small businesses are actually doing much more to give their employees flexibility. So yeah. you see large corporations fighting this backlash against rigid office mandates, and small businesses are what leading the charge toward a more adaptable, resilient, human-centric culture. Yeah, fascinating stuff. And uh, you also pointed out in your piece that this really does go well beyond just policy critiques or critiques of any agency within the government, including the Small Business Administration, uh, that it really is about the future. Uh, we had uh, former HHS mm-hmm. Secretary, uh, former Utah Governor Mike Levitt on, and uh, you know he, he went to that uh, with, with change. You can either fight against it and die, you can accept mm-hmm. it and maybe have a chance, uh, or you can lead it and, and you can uh, mm-hmm. survive and prosper. Uh, you pointed out as you closed out and just in our last minute here, uh, give us a sense of the future. What does the future of work look like and what should that conversation be about? Absolutely. So large companies, one of the reasons that they are not being comfortable with flexibility is that they have very staid traditional hierarchical norms and approaches that they to work. But that's not the future of work. We see the future is becoming more and more disrupted, more and more flexible. So with the rise of generative AI, with new technologies with um, that allow more digital work, people are able to work much more flexibly. They are spending less and less time at the same company and trying to rise up through the ranks to you know 20 levels of ranks to the top level. They are instead figuring out how to build up their skill sets and how to help their companies while helping themselves. So it's more of an alliance between the employer and the employee rather than a service from the employee through this rigid hierarchical structure where they stay their whole lives. And that's where small businesses are at. They are really good at that, really good at looking toward the future. And that's where we should all be heading, more flexibility, more comfort, more collaboration, focus on skill building and doing the actual work that needs to be doing and done instead of functioning within these rigid hierarchies where the focus is on management by walking around. And unfortunately, a lot of the House Republicans still have that old school mentality of the rigid hierarchies because they tend to be older. And that's (laughs) where they grew up in within that function. And they don't really know what small businesses, the small business reality. So they just don't know uh, what the the future holds and what the reality currently holds. Yeah, no question about it. And it is, a, it is about the future and, and figuring out how do you produce the right result? Uh, how do you have the flexibility to deal with the ups and downs of the market or the economy? Uh, and all of these things that are happening with small businesses across the country, our entrepreneurs uh, are the ones really leading that kind of change and leading a very important charge towards the future. They, they get it. They are beacons of adaptability, mm-hmm. innovation. Uh, that's the name of the game. Dr. Gleb Sapersky, CEO of the Hybrid Work Consultancy, author of Returning to the Office and Leading Hybrid and Remote Teams. Crucial conversation there. Dr. Sapersky, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for inviting me, Boyd. All right. Uh, Great, uh, great insight there. Uh, And it is the future belongs uh, to change. And our small businesses do that every day because they have to. They don't need to be regulated into making it all happen. We'll step aside for bottom of the hour news. More inside sources coming up next. It's 2.30 at KSL News Radio. I'm Dan Bombas. KSL's top story this hour, Utah's Tribal Coalition announced a new sexual assault and domestic violence helpline today. The National Violence Against Women survey shows Native Americans experience violence at a rate higher than other ethnic groups in the United States. Representative Angela Romero says there have been trust issues between that community and the state since the beginning. And because of that lack of trust, people aren't reporting, or if they do report, they don't feel like they'll be believed. Romero hopes the new helpline, staffed with operators trained to understand the needs of Utah's native community, are the first steps in a healing process. Our top national story this hour from ABC News. President Biden announcing a new student loan debt relief plan today in Wisconsin. This is aimed at those who owe more than they originally borrowed, or who are paying off 20-year-old loans. While college degree still is a ticket to the middle class, that ticket's becoming much too expensive. The president says huge student loan debts are a drag on the U.S. economy. Your money at this moment, the uh, Dow Jones average closing trading today, uh, down just 11 points, the Nasdaq up five, 
the S&P 500 up about two. And a KSL weather. Look for sunshine today and uh, later today and tomorrow. That's next. KSL News Time, 231. Here's a way to get breaking news updates anywhere you go. At the store or in a work meeting, you can get breaking news on your phone. You can quickly read it, swipe, or click for more. It's super discreet, super fast. That's the app for KSL News Radio. Hercules Credit Union has been about growing stronger together since 1946. Uh, you've heard me say it before. Hercules Credit Union is not about a place you go into to make a transaction. It's about a relationship. It's about helping you grow stronger and more confident in your financial future. Right now, Hercules Credit Union has a home equity line of credit, a HELOC, 3.99% for the first six months on all new HELOCs, no origination fees, Visa access card for easy access to your funds because they're yours. Also, you have gold tier checking, which uh, where you can earn rewards points on everyday purchases. You can redeem them for all kinds of things. Most important, you've got the peace of mind of the ultimate in identity theft protection, no monthly fees, and much more with gold tier checking at Hercules Credit Union. You can find their locations in Taylorsville, Harriman, Riverton, or Salt Lake City. Or as always with Hercules, you can find them online at HerculesCU.com. That's HerculesCU.com. The IRS is the most powerful collection agency on earth. And if you owe back taxes, the news isn't good. The IRS is raising the interest rate it charges on unpaid taxes and further rate hikes are expected. Most people don't know it, but the IRS adds interest charges to your tax debts daily. So if you owe the IRS today, you'll owe even more tomorrow. And it doesn't stop until you get right with the IRS. The good news is getting right can start with one phone call to Optima Tax Relief, America is number one tax relief firm. Optima's tax professionals specialize in the Fresh Start Initiative, a powerful IRS program that can save you thousands if you qualify. In fact, the experts at Optima have resolved over $1 billion in tax debt for their clients. Call now for a free consultation. Call 800-343-6460. 800-343-6460. 800-343-6460. Optima Tax Relief. Some restrictions apply. For complete details, please visit OptimaTaxRelief.com. Utah's strong winds can cause huge damage to your roof that you can't see. Your roof might need repair. Don't wait for a disaster. Call the Masters at Master Roofing for an honest inspection at 801-383-0072. Specializing in small repairs, Master Roofing handles everything from patching holes to full roof replacements. Schedule your free assessment at MasterRoofingUtah.com. Traffic and weather together brought to you by Sinclair's Dino Pay app. Save up to 20 cents per gallon. Here's Ricky Meese. Emergency crews are still blocking some lanes of travel at the on-ramp from Bangor Highway to go southbound on I-15. This is all due to a vehicle fire. The fire crews and other authorities are still on the scene, and the fire itself with that vehicle is over to the right. For fabulous food, atmosphere, and tradition, visit Five Alls Restaurant. Five Alls offers memorable dining experiences for any occasion. Birthdays, anniversaries, proms, graduation, engagement, and more. Visit FiveAlls.com. Ricky Meese in the KSL Traffic Center. Our KSL weather, cooler air from the weekend will linger over Utah today. Then the sun comes out, it'll warm into the 70s by Thursday and Friday. And right now we're looking at 48 degrees with mostly cloudy skies. I'm Dan Bomas from the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. Listen online at kslnewsradio.com. We're Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Social Security is with you through life's journey from birth to retirement. As your life changes year to year, so do your needs. For over 80 years, Social Security has helped to meet your needs and is committed to improving access to the services that make a difference in your life. Today, you can verify your earnings, estimate your future benefits, apply for retirement, manage your benefits, and even change your address all from the comfort of your home. Social Security's online services help put you in control with secure access to your information anytime, anywhere, allowing you to spend more time with family, friends, or simply just enjoying the day. Social Security, securing today and tomorrow. See what you can do online at socialsecurity.gov. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. 
Mom and Dad used to argue about everything, especially about Dad's drinking. It drove me crazy. It got so bad, I couldn't do my homework. I couldn't concentrate. I absolutely refused to let any of my friends come to our house for any reason. I would have been humiliated if anyone found out how much my dad drank and how loud my mom screamed at him. My family went from totally crazy to quiet, calm, and even peaceful. The only thing that happened is my mom started going to Al-Anon family groups. Her relationship with my dad really changed. I asked mom if she would take me to her Al-Anon meetings or to al -Ateen. I wanted to see if I could have a better relationship with my dad. I'm sure glad I did. If someone's drinking troubling you, you might be surprised at what you can learn in an Al-Anon or al -Ateen family group from people just like you. Call 1-888-4-AL-ANON or go to alanon.org. At Social Security, we are always thinking of ways to save you time and make things easier. That's why we created My Social Security. Opening a My Social Security account gives you secure access to your personal record and interactive tools tailored for you. You can see if you are eligible to receive benefits, view spousal benefit estimates, and compare retirement benefit estimates at different ages or dates when you want to start receiving benefits. Already receiving benefits? Use your account to change your address, set up or change direct deposit, get a proof of income letter, and more. In most states, you can also request a replacement Social Security card. Save time. Go online. Open a My Social Security account at ssa.gov slash myaccount. Social Security. Securing today and tomorrow. Produced at U.S. taxpayer expense. Victor deployed for the first time to Afghanistan in 2003. At 4 in the morning, my phone rang. They said, I regret to inform you that your husband was wounded in action. Victor sustained a moderate traumatic brain injury. I was doing school full time, and I was also then caring for Victor. One of the most important elements of caregiving is taking care of yourself. I just didn't want to forget that I also had goals and that I also had a life. What I did is I challenged Victor to meet me halfway. There are almost six million military and veteran caregivers across the nation. We have our own journey, and we can fulfill that journey at the same time that we are helping our loved one. Visit aarp.org caregiving for a free military veteran's guide to navigate your caregiving journey and better care for your loved one and yourself. Brought to you by AARP and the Ad Council. Do you worry about how much someone drinks? Do you feel angry or depressed most of the time? Do you feel neglected or unloved? Do you feel you attract people who tend to be compulsive or abusive? Do you have money problems because of someone else's drinking? Are you afraid or embarrassed to bring your friends home? Do you feel that if the drinker loved you, she or he would stop drinking? If you answered yes to any of these questions, you are not alone. Inside Sources. Inside, Inside Sources. America's Voice of Reason. Boyd Matheson on Utah's home for elevated conversation. Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Welcome back to Inside Sources here on KSL News Radio. I'm Boyd Matheson. Great to be with you today. As we look at the role of the president, uh, I think it's always interesting to see how that changes and shifts over time. What is the executive branch really about? What is it supposed to be about? And it seems more and more in the modern age that there is great pressure uh, on the president and the presidency. Uh, and less of it is about leading the nation and good governing and policy. And a lot of culture warrior in chief uh, things tend to be happening. And so then can the president be a uniter or do they have to be a divider for politics? Someone who's taken a deep look at that, uh, Gene Healy is a senior vice president for policy at the Cato Institute. Uh, research interests include executive power and the role of the presidency, as well as federalism and overcriminalization. Author of The Cult of the Presidency, America's Dangerous Devotion to Executive Power and Indispensable uh, remedy the broad scope of uh, the Constitution's impeachment power. And uh, Gene, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me on. 
Uh, and so, one, I love the fact that you uh, focus on this dangerous devotion we have to executive power, this whole idea of the the myth of the indispensable, irreplaceable, uh, and uh, the need to get back to some federalism. Uh, great piece uh, talking about the culture warrior in chief. And so give us kind of the high level first uh, in terms of what are we seeing in terms of kind of this uncivil war and, and uh, where that's kind of red and blue stuff uh, as opposed to uniting the, the nation around a vision moving forward. Yeah, well, we've been running a really dangerous experiment over the last few decades. Uh, at the same time, when Americans have been growing further apart, the red-blue tribalism, the inability to even understand people who disagree with you politically, as those trends have escalated, at the same time, we've made the president more powerful and able to settle more divisive issues. And presidents, it's not just Joe Biden, although he is a chief and current defender, but presidents of both parties have intervened more in so-called culture war issues than they used to do uh, 30, 40 years ago. Yeah. They're kind of picking at the seams of national divisions, and I, mm. that is – something that is only going to make our divisions worse. Yeah, no question. You pointed out uh, this in your piece, uh, Reason. You can check it out at reason.com. Uh, is whether it's, uh, you know, Barack Obama or George H.W. Bush or George yeah. W. Bush, uh, whoever it might be, there there is sort of this swing going in terms of what the actual role is. And I love, I love your description there and kind of picking at that because I think that that picking is sort of unraveling the fiber of the country rather than leading the country. Yeah, I, it, this is a big country with a lot of, uh, you know, different viewpoints on things. And I think uh, true diversity uh, in the best sense would recognize that we don't have to settle everything at the national level. Uh, currently, Joe Biden claims the power to be commander in chief of the girls' bathroom. He, his uh, Title IX order is going to settle uh, who has access to girls' locker rooms and which bathrooms they get to go to uh, in 13,000 school districts across the entire country. That's crazy. Whatever, however you think the, that, uh, whatever you think the policy should be. It's insane that, you know, Berkeley, California and Tupelo, Mississippi have to follow the same policy. And it, uh, there's been an increasing tendency by recent presidents to uh, intervene in just these issues, the, mm -hmm. the, the things we're most divided on. And uh, what it does is it raises the stakes of our political differences right. in a really terrifying way. Uh, if you don't want people to think that every election is a flight, a so-called flight 93 election, if you don't want them to think, you know, it's charge the cockpit, do or die, then the president should probably mind his own business and stay out of yeah. these local disputes about hotly contested cultural issues. Yeah, I think that's so important. If, if we want to have politics uh, less in the middle of our lives, that's exactly what we have to do. We have to make it less in the middle of all of our lives. Federalism, of course, is a big part of that solution. And I think it also requires restraint on the part of those who occupy the Oval Office. Uh, we always say what, what gets done by the executive stroke of a pen gets undone by the executive stroke of a pen and creates uncertainty and as you pointed out, ratches ratches it up the uh, the tension, the fear, the frustration that you know this is the most consequential election of our lifetime, and uh, fate of the free world is is in this uh, vote you're going to cast. Uh, give us something that we ought to be looking to uh, as a way to diffuse some of that and get back to presidents leading in ways they're supposed to, as opposed to fighting all of these other battles uh, that uh, don't aren't the middle of the middle of the job. Well, I think uh, you, you raised uh, the issue of federalism, and I think that's, uh, that's exactly right. Uh, you know, we, the fact that we're such a fractious country uh, with so many deeply felt views means that we ought to settle these issues as close to home as possible, get politics out of them uh, insofar as possible. But when it comes to for example, what goes on your local school library shelves, uh, that should be settled by the local community. Uh, the Biden administration is actually trying to make a federal case out of so-called book bans 
which usually involves some local school district that doesn't think that uh, the, the highly graphic novel Gender Queer uh, is something that should go on grammar school shelves. Why that should be a federal civil rights issue is beyond me. Uh, but the, the problem is that uh, both parties are now engaged in this, and uh, you will whipsaw between uh, puberty blockers being mandatory and <laughs> being illegal, uh, you know, at the federal level, uh, depending on which party manages to seize the presidency. Yeah. It's a crazy way to run a country, and it, it, worse than that, uh, it is, it's a recipe for uh, turning the metaphor of civil war into a real thing. Yeah, and, and it, is, uh, it is just as you described it. Uh, it, is a, uh, it is a messy thing, and it often ends up, uh, when, when we have these swings back and forth with executive order, uh, it often ends up creating more uncertainty, which ends up hurting the very people you say you're trying to help in all of that. Uh, and I think that's a big part of that message is uh, is stay in your lane. Uh, go back. I, you pointed this out in your piece as well. Alexander Hamilton talked about the energy in the executive would lead to steady administration of the laws. Uh, and uh, that is not what the nation needs right now. This is a great piece. And uh, Gene Healy, Senior Vice President for Policy at the Cato Institute, I uh, really appreciate you making time for us. We'll have everybody check out your piece at Reason.com. And uh, we hope you have you back, Gene, to continue the conversation. I'd love to. Thanks. Thanks again. All right. That's Gene Healy, Senior Vice President for Policy at the Cato Institute. Are the presidents in charge of the culture wars or is the president actually supposed to lead the nation, push a lot of that stuff uh, down to the state level and give Congress their part as well? A lot to get to, a lot to cover there. We'll step aside for one last break. More Inside Sources coming up next. Do you know the secret to losing up to one pound of fat every day? At slcfatloss.com, we know the secret. Our unique weight loss program makes it easy to lose weight, get healthy, and get your energy back naturally, safely, and effectively. If you'd like to lose unhealthy fat without counting points, no exercising, no prepackaged meals, no surgery, and no injections with a risk of serious side effects, go to slcfatloss.com now to schedule your free consultation in person or virtually. If you want to slim down fast before summer, Salt Lake City Fat Loss is the answer. I've lost 20 Five pounds in 60 days, and for a limited time, when you mention my name, Maria Shaleos, you'll get $200 off. Call 801-450-1882 to schedule your free consultation. Go to slcfatloss.com, slcfatloss.com. Results may vary. Many clients lose 20 to 30 pounds in about a month or two. That's up to a pound per day. For your free private weight loss consultation, call 801-450-1882 or go to slcfatloss.com. That's slcfatloss.com. Results may vary. Beat the spring cleaning rush with big savings and priority booking by calling Zero Res. Dust, dander, and bacteria are living and breeding in your carpet, upholstery, air ducts, and more with nowhere to go. The spring season allergens such as pollen are coming out of hibernation ready to invade your home. Check out the 3,300 raving customer reviews with a 4.8 Google rating and see what the hype is all about. This month, get three rooms zero resified from Salt Lake's number one carpet cleaner starting at just 99 bucks and they'll throw in a free hallway. Plus, take 25% off your air duct cleaning to get that true spring cleaning feel. Call Zero Res right now, 801-288-9376, or go online to ZeroRes.com and say you want the KSL special, Zero Res. Spell it backwards or forwards. It's the right way to clean. The time has finally come. Royalty has returned to Utah. The Utah Royals are back. Join us as head coach Amy Rodriguez leads the charge along stars like Ali Sentnor, Imani Dorsey, Maddie Bogart, and more. Plus, enjoy exclusive perks like discounts at the team store, early access to events, and more. Experience the thrill, the excitement, and the passion of professional women's soccer with the Utah Royals. Tickets are available now. Visit utahroyals.com. Savings. Now that's speaking the Lowe's language. And with my Lowe's rewards, your savings just keep coming. Save money with member-only offers and earn points when you shop. More points equal more rewards just for you. Because Lowe's knows you earned it, literally. 
Learn more about our new loyalty program at Lowe's.com slash MyLowe'sRewards. Program subject to terms and conditions. Points are awarded on eligible purchases. See Lowe's.com slash terms for full details. Subject to change. Hey, everyone. It's Ted from Consumer Cellular, the guy in the orange sweater, and this is your wake-up call. If you're paying too much for wireless service, you don't have to keep having that nightmare. Consumer Cellular has the same fast, reliable coverage as the leading carriers for less. And for a limited time, new customers receive their second month free when they sign up and use promo code MONTHFREE by May 31st. So why keep spending more than you have to? Seriously, wake up and call 1-888-FREEDOM or visit ConsumerCellular.com. Taxes, fees, and other third-party charges will apply. See website for additional details. Boyd Matheson divides rage from reason on Inside Sources. Welcome back to Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. I am Boyd Matheson. Great to be with you as always. And it's always a good day for us uh, when we have our friend from the Deseret News, Jay Evenson, joining us. He is the opinion editor. And uh, of course, tonight, uh, March Madness draws to a close. The women's uh, final was decided yesterday with South Carolina going perfect, undefeated for the season, uh, beating Iowa and Caitlin Clark in a, in a battle. Uh, tonight we'll have UConn against Purdue. You're saying, why are you giving me the sports update, Boyd? Uh, we're actually going to look at an interesting component to all of this uh, that I think we all should be concerned about. Deseret News editorial board uh, called this out, and that is that Congress should be concerned about sports gambling uh, I think in particular as it relates to college sports. And uh, Jay Evenson, uh, welcome back to the show. Hi, thanks for having me back. Yes, I'm concerned about all uh, sports gambling, but per in particular when it comes to the college game. And uh, I've seen figures that about $3 billion have been wagered on uh, March Madness this year, which is uh, an all-time high. And uh, what really concerns me, there was a report that the uh, the – men's coach at the University of Dayton was complaining that many of his players were being harassed by people who'd wagered. Now we're in the, we're in the age today where uh, when I was a, a younger, you know, if you, if you were betting on a game, you would bet on one team to beat another one, but that's not what we're talking about today. You can bet on individual players and their performance. And uh, you, you can bet that player A is going to hit more than 60% of his free throws or score so many points or get so many rebounds. And this coach is saying that his, his players are being harassed by people who've wagered and are upset when they don't uh, come through for them. The NCAA actually uh, estimates that one in three high-profile athletes receive abusive messages from someone with a betting interest. Mm. And they say this has increased exponentially since it's become legal. Wow. Uh, and I think that's such a, a fascinating thing to dig into. And again, the, the pressure, uh, and especially in college basketball, college football, the real high profile sports uh, it has become, but it's also being in all of these other sports as well because of yes. the ability to bet, not just as you said, Jay, not just on a win or lose, yes. but in a women's volleyball game. Uh, how many, you know, spikes and kills are they going to have? What's the service percentage going to be? Uh, and then to have those who either won or lost uh, going to these players, which of course is so easy to do through social media today, well, uh, the, the ending can't be good. We're always concerned about the integrity of the game, right? And that was the reason why sports gambling wasn't allowed for so many years. And sort of the cliche uh, uh, fixing scandal has to do with boxing or these one-on-one -on -one type sports where you can get someone to throw the game. Mm -hmm. And the thought being that something like basketball or football is different because you have an entire team of players. But if now you're betting on the individual performances of, of particular players – there's opportunities there, I think, for, for scandal to happen. And not only that, it goes farther. So these student athletes go to, go to class, go to school. They may casually mention in a class that, oh, so-and-so is not going to be playing tomorrow because he's got the flu or whatever. Well, that's insider information yeah. that you've given to people, which is technically illegal. These are kids who don't understand the ramifications of what they're doing. And – there have been statistics that show now that two thirds of kids 18 to 22 in colleges are placing bets, and many of them on their own school. Um, in most states, all but four states, that's illegal. You have to be 21 to to uh, wager on sports. Um, so we have all kinds of 
ethical and legal problems to deal with here that we're not addressing as a nation. Yeah, and then, of course, if you extend that one step further in terms of those who are doing the gambling and the addiction that it has become, especially in the digital age, we've been talking a lot about this whole process of you go from uh, from art and entertainment to, to being entertained on social media and scrolling, and then you get to that dopamine kind of hit thing where you're getting likes and clicks and scrolling. Uh, and so you go, as it relates to sports, you go from playing sports to watching sports to betting on sports, uh, all for that that high, that emotional thing. And so now we have this whole new era of addiction as it relates to sports betting. Right. Now, this will surprise you, but I'm not a neuroscientist. But <laughs> but I, uh, from, from everything I've read— I'm going to check your sources on right, that. <laughs> yeah. the, um, the, the brain is developing between the ages of 18 and, and, and 21. You're talking about people who were, were learned behavior becomes so much more important— mm. And addictions, and if you become a, it's it's from what everything I understand, it's much easier to become addicted at that age than it is, say, at my age. There aren't many sixty-five-year-olds who start smoking, for example. Um, so we are actually. This is what really concerns me that they are targeting people in this age range, so they become addicted and they become basically customers of the legal gambling industry for life. Mm. That's so fascinating. And so if you look at the area of, uh, you know, people can make the arguments, and you actually did this in the uh, Deseret News editorial, uh, the argument uh, is that it only, you know, gambling only hurts the person who's doing the gambling. Uh, And we know that's not really how that works. Uh, Also talk about individual freedom and all of that. But so what is the right approach? What conversation should the country, what conversation should the Congress be having as it relates to betting? We need to look at what's happening in the country because of legalized gambling. And we mentioned in the editorial there is uh, there are some members of Congress who are looking at this. One has a bill that would actually make it illegal to do the types of, of advertising that we see now in uh, live sporting events. Um, I think we need to take a look at that. We, we, we need to look at the consequences of of this, which is just, it's just swept the nation over the last four or five years. It was illegal until 2018. Now you can't get away from it. What are the consequences? We have to face up to that. Yeah, no question about it. Jay Evenson always gives us the right perspective uh, on some of these crucial conversations, and I do find it fascinating. Uh, We'll watch it play out tonight as March Madness comes to a close. Uh, Will it be a a one shining moment? Uh, You can bet on it. (laughs) Sadly, you can bet on it. Uh, and that has to be the big question and the big driver for all of us is that shining moment. Should it be one that you can place a bet on or should we go back uh, to maybe a more solar eclipse uh, perspective to all of this, that those shining moments should be real and authentic and cosmic, which we talked about earlier in the show today. And that cosmic perspective actually being humility. I think we have to start with that everywhere we go. Well, that wraps it up for us today here on Inside Sources on KSL News Radio. Thanks for joining us. I am Boyd Matheson. And as always, as you go out into the world today, make sure you see something that inspires, say something that uplifts, and do something that makes a difference. FM Midvale. KSL Salt Lake City. From the KSL Common Spirit Health Studios. This is KSL News Radio. Utah's news, traffic, and weather station. Good afternoon, 3 o'clock at KSL News Radio. I'm Jeff Kaplan. 48 degrees. It's darker now out there than during the eclipse. KSL's top story. An online group of private citizens made believe they were an 11 year old girl. Now police in West Bountiful have arrested a man for enticing a minor. KSL News Radio's Amy Kobabe is live in West Bountiful. She has details. Amy? Jeff, the group is called Predator.